Yeah, hi there. Welcome to the Beetle Garage again. I was away, I know, for a long time. I was busy writing a book about edible insects that you will have presented here in this channel in two or three weeks. But let's uh, have a look at the uh, Xylotrupis gideon sumatrensis. It's the biggest subspecies of the famous fighting beetle of Thailand, Xylotrupis gideon. It was a female in the February. Now it's around six months later and the substrate looks quite compact. So it's, it's went down to half of the horizon of the box that it has been before. And so it should be it's a wise thing to check for the lava because look at this material here. This is all converted into fecal pellets. So we have a look now and we have to give them some more food. If not, they are uh, in pupa stage already, what I don't think because that would be a bit too fast for them. Whoa, but look at this. All this pelletized wood material and this is what they did they transformed it into their body uh, mass it's mostly uh, um, of course water around 70 percent but then it's a high percentage of fat and proteins that's why we're talking about edible insects all the time 22.1 grams it's around the size that we found uh, in the Xylotrupis Gideon Siamensis from the Chotuchok market. You can see that in another video here. And the pelletized material, look here, is really completely converted into a beautiful new soil that we can use for um, planting uh, vegetables or whatever. So now this nice larva I put into uh, some new uh, material for them. Yeah, here I have it. Okay. So 20.2 grams. That's really good. Whoa, but I think there are some even bigger ones here. And could be, look, they already built some purple chambers here and that's already a male looking out here this is very nice to see look also interesting to see that the whole structure they placed their purple chambers together so here underneath this uh, here must be some more purple chambers probably two one is here one is there already came out the beetle so let's see how many we find here that so this is a nice one also, 18.8 .8 also goes into the new box, 18.8, .8. this one is 22.2, .2. yeah and the material is, this is a really nice soil, also we found out in a study that this, uh, the, the eating of the larvas in this material that is not, uh, that contains not a lot of nitrogen, they can uh, fix with the help of the bacteria in their gut, they can fix the nitrogen from the air. So that's a really nice uh, thing about keeping larvas for the decomposition of plant material. So how many we see here though? I think there's another aggregate of a purple chamber here, yeah. We will see what is inside then afterwards. And there are two more a lot of us here, 21.7, 22.8, there are even more here, uh, one more, two more, and here at the edge also it seems to be a compacted structure, could be that there are some purple chambers here in the edge also, let's 24.8 that's a real big one here and this one here 23.9 also they are now they are really heavy and it seems that they're not only on the weight for pupation they already had pupate and not only the females the small ones but also the males so let's see what we find in the edge here whether we find some signs of purple chambers also in this place here. So 
also what's interesting here, you don't see no earthworm in that material. And that's a really good sign. So um, if they manage to build this kind of beautiful structures for their pupation, why not put them back into this substrate to build some more of this? So that's what I probably will do and find out whether this is a good method here. I see a mail inside, but let's open it very, very carefully. It's a pupa of a mail. No, it's just in the stage of eclosure. Look, you see the transparent skin of the beetle here. And it's just on the way to removing the skin from the already hardened uh, body parts. What I do, I will not disturb it anymore, carefully close it without destroying the, the chamber here. And then we will save it in kind of this, so that it can come out, come out here. Uh, in the same way he was uh, in the original substrate. So that's probably also with a little help of a tape around it. It's just to fix his original construction so that the beetle can finish his enclosure here in the next few hours. And of course we should not forget to go back uh, to see it in around one week, then the skin is hardened. So that's the first of this uh, construction. So now look here. This is a nice freshly closed male in this little box. Let's see whether he already finished his enclosure so that he uh, put his wings under the Eluto. This is a small one, but a nice one, and he's also quite uh, active already. Yeah, look at him. He's a really nice, small uh, male of Xylotrupes Gideon Sumatrensis. Now we will have a little cage for him too, where we feed him with some beetle jellies. Of course now, in the first time, he will dive down into the substrate and be happy that we don't disturb him anymore in the next few uh, days because now it's time for him to harden the uh, body outside. So let's see the next ones. Now here's another one. Um, look, it's just the same situation. No, he's already out here. Also a little male. <laughs> uh, it's the same. Look, it seems like they are um, making their pupil chambers close to each other. Also, it's the same um, age of the larva. So this must be a small one, a two. That is now on my hand. I also put him into this other box. They can be here together for the next, uh, let's say, two to three days until they have finished their hardening process. And now I think this is like a tut on amund chamber. When you open a structure like this you never know what is inside. There is a, hole, a little hole but I cannot see anything now so we have to open it carefully. But also interesting it is placed on the bottom of the box. There's a little hole here where it could push through here because that's already from the inside of the pupil chamber. So let's open it very carefully and see what is inside. Whoa, this is a bigger male here. And also on the way to a closure so we don't uh, disturb him anymore. He needs some more time. Otherwise, if we disturb them now, it, uh, the chance that they will have crippled wings and Elutos is very big, so we don't uh, want to go for that risk. We just place him back the same way uh, I did the other. So 
So we have here. Oh, there's a <laughs> hole in the peat pot. That's not a problem. So, so we have two males. We have uh, two pupas on the way to being mailed, and we have some more of the older larvas that are on their way for pupation. So I have a last look into the box and check whether it would be good idea to place them back because in this stage they don't eat so much anymore. We can give back this material and place back the larva because it seems here they have a good surrounding for pupation. No of the pupal chambers collapsed. We have no dead pupils. Uh, find here we have already two males, so that's a good sign that it could be okay for them if I just place back all the material here. Although it's uh, a fecal pellet material, that's not a problem uh, for them because they live in it. And that's just the thing we do. And of course we check again whether there's really no earthworm here, but this is a really good material here. Probably also they have eaten up the earthworms. That would be a nice uh, thing about them too. So yes, and then we just count them one more time before we give them back. So we can check later how many we placed in that box. It's about one, two, three, four, five, seven. Huh? Seven big larvas. So these are really uh, a nice size of the of the larvas. Let's see what happens. You should know it in about two to three weeks just before I go to Thailand. Thanks for watching.